Wednesday, February 23rd, 2000. GOP presidential hopeful John McCain has a double win. And the key to running a successful franchise business will take you to San Diego to the International Franchise Association Convention. First Business, America's news and information leader. Now, here's Trish McShane. Good morning, I'm Trish McShane in Washington. Barton Eckert is on assignment. Two more primary contests down and two more big wins for Arizona Senator John McCain. With that story and more, here's All News Channel's Andy Skugman. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, Trish, and good morning, everyone. John McCain is the big winner from yesterday's GOP primaries. But George W. Bush says the Republican Party may be the real loser in the end. McCain defeated Bush in both the Michigan and Arizona primaries. In Michigan's open primary, McCain received just one-fourth of the GOP vote. The Arizona senator drew most of his support from independents and Democrats, which he calls a new McCain majority. Michigan sent a powerful message across America. A message, a message that our party wants real reform from the real reformer. Meanwhile, Bush seems more worried about the GOP party than his two losses Tuesday. He told supporters in Kansas City that he won the majority of Republican votes in Michigan. However, he fears the independents and Democrats who voted for McCain in Michigan will vote Democratic come November. But there are going to be people who come in our primary, just be aware of it, who come in with one intention to vote against somebody so they can go back and vote for Al Gore. That's the facts. Yeah. The next Bush-McCain battle is Super Tuesday set for March 7th. Those are the headlines at this hour. I'm Andy Skugman for First Business. Thanks, Andy. Investors returned to Wall Street after the President's Day holiday with the same concerns over interest rates that sent the market plumbing on Friday. The Dow lower early on rebounded to close in positive territory. The Nasdaq, not so lucky, ended the session with a moderate loss. The long bond yielding 6.08%. The NYSE Composite Index up slightly with volume checking in at just over 980 million shares. On the move, Sterling Commerce shooting up 38% after local telephone giant SBC Communications agreed to acquire the software company for about $3.9 billion. Shares of Nextel climbing after the wireless communications company reported a narrower than expected fourth quarter loss and declared a two-for-one stock split. Home Depot checking in with better than expected fourth quarter profits. Shares up a dollar there. Meanwhile, uh, Internet stocks overall had a pretty bad day. Network solutions slipping 9.8% or $28 on the day. America Online continuing its skid following an announcement that it had entered into a $60 million agreement with Homegrocer.com and Microsoft. Uh, back in court again after settlement talks between the company and the Justice Department broke down. Shares of Microsoft down for the session. With more on Blue Chip Rebound, here's correspondent Steve Dunlop of Reuters Financial Television in New York. A late burst of buying saved the Dow from an early plunge. The Blue Chips bouncing back for a gain of 85 on the day as investors shop for bargains, but they continue to ease back on technology shares. And that sent the tech-heavy Nasdaq down 31. Leading the slide among the techs, those high-flying biotechnology stocks that have lit up the NASDAQ in recent weeks. Among the big losers, Millennium Pharmaceuticals down 25 and a quarter, Human Genome Sciences off 25 and three quarters, and Insight Pharmaceuticals losing nearly 42. Blazing a trail higher among the Dow stocks Tuesday, the recently lackluster traditional pharmaceuticals and chemicals. Merck gained three and a quarter, Johnson & Johnson was up one and a quarter, and DuPont moved ahead two and a half. Other chip-related stocks were mainly higher. Rambus, the developer of memory enhancement technology, rocketed 41 and a half on the day, Intel gaining one and three-eighths. Sotheby's took a hammering a day after the firm's top two executives resigned amid allegations of possible price fixing. Chairman Alfred Taubman and Chief Executive Diana Brooks stepped down Monday as authorities in the U.S., U.K., and Australia investigated whether Sotheby's and its rival Christie's 
might have colluded to set commission fees. Sotheby's shares ended the day off $2 at a one-year low of 15 and 5 eighths. And checking the final numbers, the Dow snapped a three-day losing streak, climbing back to 10,304. The S&P added on six, but the NASDAQ remained in the red. And that's the Reuters market report. From the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Steve Dunlop. In Mexico City, stocks finished in the red for the fourth straight session, hurt by the volatility on Wall Street. The Bolsa IPC fell 80 points to 72.34. The peso also weakened, fetching 9.4 to the dollar. Checking your national forecast, while most of the country will enjoy balmy temperatures today, a storm system will hang over the Midwest and into the Northeast. Here's All News Channel's Melissa Nollinger. Strong storms developing over the Mississippi River Valley today. Now for the forecast, a cold front moving through the central U.S. will touch off storms from Texas through Missouri. Clouds will rule in the Northeast, and a cold front in the West touching off showers in the Rockies. For the highs, spring-like temps covering most of the country, 40s and 50s moving into the northeast, warm in the Ohio Valley with temps rising into the 60s, and 40s and 50s throughout much of the west. Melissa Nollinger, First Business. Coming up on First Business, First Business anchor Barton Eckert has the latest from the 40th Annual International Franchise Association from San Diego. Fast cats in the global energy business. We're much leaner, more agile, and a lot more innovative than the other cats. And that's why to a fast cat, anything is possible. Think big, move fast, Conoco. Are you one of the millions of American males who would like increased sexual energy? If you've been considering Viagra as a solution, consider something different. All natural NRX. Clinical studies show various ingredients of NRX enhance sexual energy, increasing desire, performance, and satisfaction. NRX is all natural with no side effects. With NRX, you'll feel the increased energy within minutes and with no chemicals. We're so sure you and your mate will be completely satisfied. We'll offer you a 30-day, no questions asked, full refund. NRX stimulates sexual energy by expanding the blood vessels, causing increased blood flow to specific areas of the body. Unleash the power of NRX now. Call 1-800-382-2680 in the next 10 minutes and find out how you can save 30% off the retail price. Take advantage of our special TV offer. Call 1-800-382-2680. On Asian markets overnight in Japan, Tokyo share prices ended the morning mixed with the dollar slipping against the yen. The dollar dropped from yesterday's high of 111.44 to 110.15. The Nikkei average gave up small early gains to end the morning session at 19,373.04, down more than 17.5 points or 0.09%. Hong Kong's market opened sharply higher with the Hang Seng rebounding more than 1% from yesterday's 2% loss. Most of the other Asian markets also showed gains. Checking the markets in the UK this morning, the FTSE 100 opens after its second straight day of losses. The yen down, the pound higher this morning, the Swiss franc falling, and the euro regaining its parity with the dollar up fractionally this morning. Uh, Brent North Sea crude closed higher in New York trading and uh, gaining 65 cents to $626.58 the barrel. A convoy of trucks converged on Capitol Hill Tuesday to protest diesel fuel prices and demand tax breaks to offset increased operating costs.
With horns blaring, police led more than 200 truckers along the protest route through D.C. streets to the steps of the Capitol, where the, trucks, where the truckers staged a rally. Haulers say increases in diesel fuel prices are costing them as much as $100 a day. They say that cost will run them out of business and wreak havoc on the robust economy. Oil touches the lives of every American in this country, and our, this, this great economy that we've been experiencing is going to come tumbling down when inflation goes through the roof because of the extra cost of oil. Protesters won Congress and President Clinton to repeal a 24 cents federal excise tax paid at the pump on diesel fuel and investigate OPEC. Microsoft may have lost at least part of its legal battle yesterday as company lawyers tried to mount a defense against monopoly charges. During closing arguments in the antitrust trial, the judge brushed aside claims made by Microsoft that federal copyright law allows wide discretion in the way a company designs and distributes its software. The judge told Microsoft lawyers copyright law does not protect against the kind of monopoly conduct Microsoft is charged with. Dell Computer, the world's number two computer maker, announced it will begin hosting websites and data for small and medium-sized businesses. Web hosting allows businesses to set up and run websites through servers housed in a separate and secure high-end data center. Dell said it was making the move to broaden its sales base and increase revenue. In San Diego this morning, the 40th Annual International Franchise Association Convention is wrapping up. Its theme is aimed at fine-tuning proven strategies to build successful franchised businesses. First business anchor Barton Eckert is there on assignment. He has a look at franchising reaching around the globe. Franchising is a strategy proven to grow businesses quickly. It's been used by some 70 industries to develop national brands since the 40s when franchising began in the United States. Today it's huge as American franchising concepts are being used to stimulate the economy not only here but also in other nations. Joanne Shaw has just been elected to chair the world's oldest and largest franchising organization and is the first woman to head the group. I don't look at it that way. I just think that um, I face such a great organization and there's a tremendous amount of people that have been great leaders along the way. And maybe it's just my turn and my time. It, whether it's male or female doesn't really matter. It's, it's the individual and, and their accomplishments. What I, what I do like, though, is that this is going to give a lot more visibility to women going forward. And I think that that's really important for women and for franchising because I think women are great for franchises. Franchising has taken on a whole new meaning of late in our 24-hour, seven-day-a-week world. It is a growing industry with the IFA bringing together 30,000 franchisors, franchisees, associations, and suppliers. This year, here in San Diego, the proof is in the pudding. Attendance broke convention records. What is here is cutting edge, from e-commerce to e-locator. Franchising is small business down at the Main Street level, but for companies like IBM and Target Smart, small business is big business. We're helping the small businesses as part of, a, of IBM to market to their customers back into direct marketing, traditional marketing for small businesses. That's what we're doing. McDonald's chairman and CEO Jack Greenberg told this franchising gathering that language and cultural differences are easily bridged if you work at it. That his company, for example, is not only 85% owner-operated, but because of that, it's not really multinational. It's a group of multi-local companies. In San Diego, Barton Eckert, First Business.